newsletter 457. If you have a newsletter in front of you, this is the 30th of the 11th. Last Sunday in the 11th month of 2008, we're nosing, nosing in on the uh, reindeer season, sandy season, and I'm looking forward to slaying many a religious heretic over the next month with the sword again of course not with fist and cups but with the sword slay the heretics and the devils of, of darkness lying spirits love it I was born for it born to war for the great warrior Jesus the Christ who doesn't worry <laughs> and neither do I have to worry because that's sin too. So the newsletter today coming out of Matthew 24 and the verses 45, remembering this is the last Sunday of the November 2008, last Sunday of the 11th month. It reads, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom... his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Prominent words here are faithful, wise, servant, master, household. And we know that as the scriptures read anyway that Jesus' household is his church we know that don't we some don't uh, some scholars don't either they actually think that Jesus' household is the local household or the family no no. when the Lord talks about the master and his household he's talking about the church but David Wilkinson of Times Square Church has rendered this reading in a totally contrary manner by talking about the wise and faithful servant in regards to the evil and unfaithful servant as being a man in his household. But it's not talking about that. Mr. Wilkinson says that the evil servant sees no need for right living, making peace with fellow servants. He sees no need to preserve unity in the home or at work or in the church. He smites his fellow servants, holds grudges and destroys their reputation well what a translation what a what an absolute carnal religious bible institutionalized and i would probably throw in there orthodox because jesus was the most unorthodox minister that ever set foot on dirt can you say amen what it's talking about in the parable of the evil and the faithful servant is, I believe, pastors and ministers who have not, who have not fed the sheep the truth. Therefore, are not wise and faithful but evil and unfaithful and when you go to that parable in Matthew 24 you read things like this in Matthew 24 46 blessed is that servant whom his master when he comes will find so doing. 
And surely I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunks. You're listening? The master of that servant will come on a day that he is not looking for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with hypocrite. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now let's go to Matthew 24 and verse 43. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, verse 44, Matthew 24, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his house to give them food in due season. You see that? Ministers are called to give food. This is not talking about natural food. This is talking about spiritual food. This is talking about ministers who go off and associate with sinners, with drunks. This is talking about those who run churches and don't feed the sheep in season. The truth, the, the doctrine of the Christ, which causes the sheep to do what? To go off and get drunk, to go off and play merry, to behave in a carnal way, even beating and fisticuffs and, 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 and thuggery. And I've had that in churches that I've gone to minister a prophecy or whatever and I've had them behave like thugs and getting into the physical and throwing me out of the church because I spoke against them Jesus never laid a finger on anyone and a man, a Christian man and a man who is a servant of the Lord doesn't lift a, his, his hand either to uh, deal with situations that should be dealt with with the word of God. So Mr. Wilkerson, his interpretation of this parable is totally incorrect because it's relating to the coming of Jesus. It's relating... Now, if this was about the household, how could a man be a Christian? How could he even be the servant of the Lord if he's beating his household? Are you listening? And he is not just beating his household but he's off with the drunks and drinking. And Could that one be Christ's servant? Could that one be a Christian? Could that one be born again? This is talking about the church. It's talking about Ministers who have not laid hold of the doctrine of Christ and fed the doctrine of Christ in season and the season is not up to Gallup polls and surveys the season is led by the Spirit whatever the season is only the Spirit knows whatever the balance may be only the Spirit knows that's why he's told us to walk by the Spirit this is why the Lord has said we must walk as the Spirit leads then the minister knows what the season is. And many get on the bandwagon if they find out a minister knows the seasons in the spirit. Not the seasons in the sun. We have fun. We have seasons in the sun. Not those seasons. Not summer, autumn, springtime too. No, I'm talking seasons in the spirit. I'm talking 
uh, the food of the, the words of the Lord and the doctrine of Christ. Thank you, sister. Yes. I'm talking the spiritual realm here. But once again, Mr. Wilkinson, like large majority of ministers today in the churches, they always bring it back to the family. They always bring it back to the children in the household, which is why children run the house. And which is why women are running the house instead of men. Are you listening today? It's all brought back to humanity. It's a humanised gospel. It's not a Jesus gospel. It's not about Jesus. It's about souls, 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 isn't it? But it's when Jesus, it's when it's all about Jesus that everything starts to take its spontaneous place where it should be and not number one the wife and the children and the husband are not number one Sandy is not number one presents and, 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 and uh, luxuries and, 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 and the pampering of the flesh is not number one the second command is not number one and never can be never in a billion years it can never be the second command is the second command and it is second. And first things are first, don't they? Is that right? Can someone say amen? Well, we don't want to look at it like this because Paul Sheehan doesn't look at things in an orthodox manner. I look at things in a Holy Ghost manner and that's totally contrary to the world and the way of the world and the humanistic gospel and, and, and the Martin Luther King uh, racial gospel. Martin Luther King and the Obamas of the world with their race that tells me there's a hang up there for starters it tells me there's unforgiveness there it's got nothing to do with race Jesus' message wasn't about race Jesus' message was Jesus' message it was about him <laughs> that everyone would know he is Lord and God it's not about race it's not about, oh, you know, uh, women this and women that. It's not about, you know, the world turning itself upside down for children. They brought it all on themselves in this society today. Every, the, 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 the governments and, and the community brought it all on themselves. If it's not petticoat junction, it's children ruling and demanding as the scriptures say it will be children will rise up against their parents oh you're not doing enough for me you're not doing this and you're not doing that it's your fault that's why I'm like I am they're pointing the finger at mum and dad it's your fault no it's not it's your fault there's no such thing as uh, you know, it, it's all buck passing it, 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 there's no such thing as, as, as personal responsibility anymore there's no such thing as free will. That went out the door with Spurgeonite. You don't have free will. You just, you know, you just save because you've been elected. You don't have to do anything. You can't save yourself. You can't save uh, um, your hide from hell by doing what Jesus said. You're just going to be saved. You don't have to do what Jesus said. It's absolute. It's already done. Well, what's repentance for if it's absolute? Why, why do they use the word unconditional love and they got marriage vows? What are marriage vows about if it's unconditional love? Well, why, where do they come from? The marriage vows come from the unconditional love churches. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you're thinking. You, 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 you're too deep. We need to be, you know, flashing the pan, slapping the in the pan, and we don't want to know this, you know, um, gospel from above. We want this other gospel. We want the other Jesus gospel, which is all about humans. Uh, look, I know, I know men and women in the world. They're not born again or anything. And they make peace at home. They make peace and, and, and at work. 
and even in religious organisations. They're peacemakers. They, they, they don't step a foot out of place. They're not saved. And they're not servants of the Lord. <laughs> they're not born again. How can this refer to the household? It's referring to the church. It's referring to the leaders of the church. It's referring to the church itself. To be ready that all of us have been entrusted with the word of God to one degree or another. Can someone say amen? Oh, but you, you know, and, and Mr. Wilkinson goes on to say that they hold grudges and destroy people's reputations. I, I think he's trying to dodge something here. He's trying to cover something up. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me say this, please. Just listen to this for one minute. I have not ever read one account. I've only been reading the Bible for 20 plus years. That's not very long. On a daily basis. Can someone say amen? That's not very long. I have never come across an instance where a godly man or woman's reputation had been ruined by a villain or a devil or a demon or a heretic. Look, if your reputation has been ruined, it wasn't (laughs) God-given. He just a dream... Dream, dream, dream. You never had a reputation. That's in your mind. Because I believe by the power of the Holy Ghost, without any doubt, you cannot ruin the reputation of a spiritual man. You can only enhance them. (laughs) So this man, Wilkerson's in the flesh. It just... His mind. It's just ministering from his own heart. That's not the Holy Ghost. And to top it off, Mr. Wilkerson goes into bat for the Roman Catholics and says this. This is taken from Mr. Wilkerson's website. There are true Jesus worshippers among the Roman Catholic priests. God is filling these people with his spirit. I have seen these priests weeping with conviction and crying out to Jesus. God has people everywhere and we are not to call any of them unclean or common. Now, I don't know anyone more unclean than a liar. We usually think unclean is you haven't used any We haven't used any dove soap or we haven't put any perfume or aftershave on. The perfume and aftershave and bubble baths won't cleanse you from your sin. If that was the case, Jesus wasted his time on the tree. Can you say amen? Thank you. You can pile all the perfume on you want. You, you, you can have 20 bubble baths a day. You can stay in a bubble bath all day and get out the same filthy, unclean sinner hell bound. Can someone say amen? Yes. So, oh, they're crying out and weeping. I seen a bloke down in the shopping centre one day crying because the police caught him knocking off trying to knock off something out of the shop and he was doing the same thing next week he's crying and the the cop said no it's too late now mate you've been caught and then blow me down I said a couple of days later slipping a couple of chocolates in his pocket again (laughs) come on fair like it makes you wonder, doesn't it? 
what what we're going to have in, in I mean the end of the end times we're in <laughs> we makes you makes you wonder what's coming down the road crikey we're copping this now so Romans eight twenty eight what does it say all things all things work to good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And they reckon they believe the word of God. But they say, oh, you know, you're ruining people's reputation. These are the bad people who ruin other people's reputation. And oh, grudging. Look, if someone holds a grudge against me for some reason, and, and I've dealt with that, with that person, and they're still holding the grudge, I don't have to get bogged down. And they're the ones that are going to have a hard time hey? not me we've been dealt with so that, that's dismissed as well there's not much left of this teaching of Wilkinson's is there and he's the so called prophet New York prophet prophet in New York no 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 going into bat for Roman Catholic priests who who, who who live a life that denies the death, burial and resurrection of Christ and the priesthood of the New Testament. Spiritual priesthood, not all the clobber and the gowns and, and, and swinging the incense with the passive smoking and, 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 and travelling over here, you know, and travelling over there to apparitions of, of a dead village girl and oh, we pray to the dead village girl and you're not a true bony bona fide Roman Catholic if you don't pray to Mary and get yourself bogged down in Mariology nah he's back in that and when you go into bat for Roman Catholicism I tell you what you, you're going into bat against Jesus you're batting against the master himself you're batting against the Bible. <laughs> so, I'll finish by asking one question. Who is a true and faithful servant? Hey? Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Is it wise what this man has said? Is it faithful to Jesus? Going into bat for Roman Catholic heretics and the whore church? Harlot church? Is it wise? Is it faithful? When the master comes, will he accept Mr. Wilkerson? I've got my doubts. I really have. Unless he repents. I'm going to say something today that's going to really shock you. But we'll see if it comes to pass. Now, this is recorded. I was looking a picture only recently well probably three weeks last three weeks ago and I'm looking at this picture of the ceiling of Times Square Church or supposedly And as I was looking at the ceiling, it all started to crumble and cave in. You think about it. It all started to crumble as if the whole building was coming down. The only thing I put to that was an earthquake in New York City. as I looked at this picture I looked away and I looked back again and once again I seen all the ceiling caving in and cr like you see like in a movie you know when everything crum a building is falling apart and crumbling it wasn't so long back that I was in the city of Brisbane walking through the town near the town hall 
And this was before they started advertising on the TV about the town hall falling apart. And I took one look at the town hall and the word I got in my heart was falling apart. That's all, falling apart. It's all rotting and falling apart. That's the word in my heart. Blow me down. Two or three weeks later on the news, they found out the can new man's house is falling apart. The town hall. It's all cracking up. I looked at the Times Square church picture of the ceiling on their website. I'm looking at it. And it, it all started to cook, cave in and crumble. And when I considered this, I thought of one earthquake, number two, they have not repented of their sin. Whether this can be reversed or whether this can be um, relented of, whether it, if they repent, whether this will be stopped, I don't know, but that's what I've seen. And I'm telling you what I've seen. These are the last days. We'll see if it comes to pass. I didn't say that, says the Lord. I said, This is what I've seen. This is what I've seen. 